we had uh, governor of uh, Sakuta State who was here, Governor Wamako, who was here, and he said it's been very peaceful here in Sokoto State. And just recently, the United States uh, has looked at uh, the Boko Haram sect and said uh, they are criminals and they are terrorist organization. What do you think about the U.S. declaration on that? Please, you know, we shouldn't insult ourselves. The, two, the United States of America is two years behind me. Let me put it that way. And let me arrogantly say so. Some of us said from day one, we're not talking about religion. Now you have, a, you have, you know, for me the tragedy about Boko Haram is that we really don't understand what we're dealing with. And some of us who are, are allegedly sailing against the wind, I got, I got all kinds of people. There was nothing that some of my brothers within the Christian faith said all kinds of things against me. But I was also proud because in conscience, I knew that what I was saying was the result of some pretty painstaking analysis. I'm a student of religion and politics. All right? So, and I'm not saying it arrogantly, but what you're talking about, do we need America to come and tell us that what we are dealing with is criminality? Do we need an American imprimatur? Are we saying with all our universities, even with us, we need to stop that? No, 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 no. no, no, no with it from no, that perspective. Is it, is it the government of America that is running your project? The government of Nigeria. But, but the government has been dealing with the problem. But my dear, you know in Nigeria, it is in this country, you go to a medical doctor and you say, Doctor, I'm suffering from malaria. You know, that's what we say. <laughs> So the problem is, if you, you can, I can't just look at you. If I look at you and I say you're suffering from malaria, well, that's fine. I'll give you the drugs for malaria. But for goodness sake, when you are treating a patient, okay, I'm not a doctor, but when you are treating a patient, there must be a correlation between his state of health and the progress of being healthy. And the drugs is taken. But if all the things we've done so far, this crisis literally showed no sign of abetting, something must have been wrong, one with the diagnosis or with the drugs that we're administering. So what I'm saying is, we didn't need America to come and tell us that this is not about, about, about the things we said. In the last 10 or more than, in the last 10 or 15 years, I have been saying over and over, I've researched on this subject for maybe 25 or 30 years. And my argument and my conclusion is we don't have a religious problem in Nigeria. We've got problems. But whether religion favors and triggers of certain things, that's, that's a different matter altogether. So the issue is we diagnose this problem wrongly. First of all, people, a body of Nigerians said, you know what, let these men that keep killing themselves. Then we said it was religion. Then we realized it wasn't religion. Then we said it was Islam. Then we said they were bombing churches. Then we discovered no Muslims were dying. So the problem, we had, we had a problem, but we didn't have the mental discipline to diagnose the problem. Elsewhere, you don't have the kind of governments that we have in Nigeria where people think that because you are president or governor, therefore you know everything. We are a member of the National Assembly, therefore you know everything. Elsewhere, problems of this nature will be resolved by serious thinkers in universities, think tanks, institutions, and so on and so forth, who think about how societies move. The Boko Haram issue is it's about economics. It's about sociology. It's about a, a, a body of literature. So far, every Nigerian became an say It is poverty that is driving them. Let's create jobs. Okay, what job are you going to create? These criminals are already earning more money than you anyway. So what jobs are you going to create? Those are not the incentives they want. And unless you enter the mind, you know, the old Chinese uh, 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 um, uh, philosopher, Tao Shou, he said, you know, if you want to combat your enemy, you must enter his mind. So I'm just saying, I think this grace that Nigeria should be sitting here two years later or three years after this to say the Americans have said, what are you uh, talking about? Well, that is it. Okay. So, in essence, then, our government and our people in authority as far as security is concerned, they have not been proactive, you will say. No, you see, you see, part of the problem, and you know it, okay, governance in Nigeria is another form of mysticism. You will be surprised to see the kind of people that have influence in how Nigeria is governed. They are pastors, they are, they are medicine men, they are, they are baba lawyers. No, please, don't laugh. You know, because you know it's true. Okay? There are people in security who will tell you, 
He told me, Excellency, this is the problem we have. Excellency says, this is what Malam told me last night. Okay, Excellency says, this is what Pastor said. And if Malam claims to have a divine connection, or Pastor says he has a divine connection, and, and just have breakfast with God, then that what Pastor says is what the man in power is going to do. And I've seen governance is a science. Okay, you can't submit it to chance. So what I'm saying is, in a situation where men with responsibility and power are busy consulting people who don't know anything about how life is. Like somebody told me, my niece told me a very funny story about a young man when they were, we went to the Babalao, he was there in the university in Zaria. And apparently this guy went to the Babalao and he said, you know, it's a malam. And they said he could do everything. And the man goes to the man, he says, you know, I have problems because tomorrow we're going to sit for exam in mathematics, you know, and I have problems. And the man has never had the word mathematics. He said, oh my goodness, you know, ma mathematics, no mature, you know, that is, <laughs> mathematics is really a terrible disease. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> but this last one, last words, the last one the guy can relate with. So what I'm saying is, <laughs> if you have a country where people in power are consulting shamans and witch doctors and all kinds of people then you get the kind of outcome Boko Haram is something you're going to resolve as a result of a scientific and a clinical analysis of what the pro this, this is not it's not brain surgery it's not rocket science but we have to submit ourselves to how other people deal with these problems because like i said people i'm I, i'm very much involved in this because i run into people who keep telling me you know all bishops let them let religious leaders talk and i said they have a problem in london and let them pray do they, do they say have you ever had the prime minister of of of, of england or the or of, 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 of canterbury let them have a meeting that's not her business okay but here in nigeria you think that by gathering religious leaders say let us do this let us Re leadership is not about moral exhortation getting results is not about moral exhortation and people come to me they say you know preach against corruption i said the teams are not in my church <laughs> okay? okay i mean the real big teams are not they're not they don't pre preach against arm robbery the arm robberies are not in the church the few people who are coming to church seeking for salvation are the ones who are trying to be good the person to catch the arm robber and the real corrupt person is not me. That is all my moral exhortation. It is those who are benefiting externally. And it, whether they are security, whether they are all kinds of agencies, but those who are benefiting and those who have been compromised. Because when you have a state where the, the people who don't do right compromise the apparatus of power, whether it is Al, you know, Al Capone in Chicago, or whether it is, you know, once that happens, governance is crippled. So what I'm saying in effect is we need to be a little bit more clinical in terms of what are the sources of our problems. And like Governor Fashola said, you don't need to hold conferences about all this. It's mm -hmm. about deciding what do we want to do and where do we want to take our people to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we are in Sokoto because the NGF is happening in Sokoto. Uh, well, the NGF is having their um, retreat. retreat in Sokoto. Um, we asked them a few questions, but um, I, I want to ask you one of the questions we asked them uh, to put the NGF in perspective. Um, to your mind, has the NGF be, been of any benefit to Nigeria and to Nigerians? I don't know, it's like asking whether the Gulf, uh, the Eco Club, has been of benefit to Nigerians. Uh, <coughs> when really, the governors themselves have said that this is just an association, they don't penalize you for not coming for a meeting. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if they find me for if they have a register that marks those who come for me. I don't, I don't have a, I don't have their 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 their, their, their guidelines. Um, but if it is just an association, it, that's what it says it is. It's an association. But it is also a wonderful platform for people to compare notes in terms of what do we really want to deliver to Nigerians, and that for us as governors. Um, how do we improve the quality of democracy and democratization? And that how do we work with the executive at a national level to make sure that there is synergy and that we are really we are not in competition about you know which state is doing better except to compete about 
which of our people, how much poverty are we reducing? How much, how much, how, how are people getting well? How are children getting into school? What will the future be like? For me, it, 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 to that extent, it can be a robust platform for debate. But as to whether they need to have more than one or two meetings in a year, that's purely a completely different matter altogether. Because there are a lot of things that we need to put in, in you know, uh, in my view, in perspective. Uh, but as I said, I, I, I am not sufficiently. I, it's a pity that they become uh, so much part of the national conversation. A lot of Nigerians feel slightly differently, and I would like to say that for me. They ought to be a platform, I mean, there ought to be a platform internally, an internal mechanism for conflict resolution. And that uh, we are just the voters, all right? We are the voters. And uh, how they conduct themselves, how they conduct their business has an impact on how politics is played in Nigeria. Um, how they, they behave in terms of tolerance, in terms of uh, how they lead with, with among themselves across political parties. Uh, and so on and so forth has a lot of impact on Nigeria. But as I see, you see 36 uh, uh, governors, all members of one forum, except that they are all men, and I thought that should be of concern to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well we, we asked the question, if we can move on, we asked the question, uh, we, are, we put this question to Governor Fashola when he was here, to do with our democracy and... By the way, I'm not a governor, I'm just a bishop, you know, I, mean, yes. I don't know why you're asking the question. I don't have a budget. You don't have a budget. You don't have a budget. Yeah, I mean, 